Let us enter into the silence, there to be still and to pray. Listening for the gospel message as we greet life, come what may. From the silence, let us now venture as love's servant by our deeds. Faithful to the gospel message, justice for those in need. For those in need, peace for those in need, hear our prayer, O God, serve those in need, charity for those in need. The Holy Scriptures according to the first epistle of John, the third chapter. We know love by this, that Jesus laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need, and yet refuses to help. Little children, let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth, and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the Spirit that he has given us. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. When we were able to gather together for worship and when we could gather in our church building physically and elsewhere to work on our ministry things together, there were many, many tools in our worship space and in our church which were put to use by all of us. And then when this ruddy pandemic brought us to a time where we could no longer gather safely together, and those specific tools were not available, we found all kinds of creative ways to continue. And these ways were possible, sometimes without the same physical tools, not because we are personally magicians who could manage without stuff, but because, as the scripture that Jan read said, each of us is given gifts of the Spirit by God. Each person is given something to do that shows who God is. 
everyone gets in on it and everyone benefits. All kinds of things are handed out by the Spirit and to all kinds of people. And we have responsibilities and calls to use those gifts as well as possible, to prioritize how we use them according to the Spirit's leading, and to allow our gifts to bear witness to Jesus' love, not in word or speech, but in truth and in action, as the first John epistle says. Today I begin this final week of ministry as your pastor and my church office looks like a hurricane is passing through it. Things are being packed up and I came across many items, I keep coming across items that are special in so many ways, physical items that bring back so many memories from me and photographs of so many of you, quite a few of you, a few feet shorter than you are now. So in the course of this week, as I did some of the packing, I passed on a few items. I passed on the one-eared moose and the peace dove, which we used for many a children's message. And I passed these items on to Carrie Stiller for safekeeping and to remind her to keep up her discipleship. I packaged up a few of my church business cards to some of you, asking you to write messages of encouragement to me on the back and return them to me so that I may have them in my new work setting where it is my hope that my gifts, maybe entirely different gifts than the ones I relied on here, will be put to good use by God. Some of you may remember Sarah Glinsky. She joined us as a member at St. Peter's in the middle of a pandemic. And she joined us first as our MDiv placement student. And even despite the pandemic was so drawn to our, our ways that she asked to officially become a member of our congregation. Sarah is now doing placement work with another congregation, so she's not here on Sunday. But I packed up all kinds of books to pass on to her and her colleagues in their studies. And then last week or the week before, I received from someone an e-tablet that they were no longer needing. And I hoped that Louis Gomes could make it Zoom capable and it could then be passed on to someone else who could continue to worship along with us by Zoom. There are so many physical things that we still have access to even though the pandemic has restricted us. And noticing, even as I packed, how many of these items came to be pandemic relevant ways of sharing the gospel and how much sometimes our jobs as disciples and ministers whether lay ministers or ordained, is to be part of a bigger chain that brings the gospel to others. So Tracy, I think about you being part of that chain when you do your walk around Preston and deliver home communion kits. It's not happening now, but I'm leaving you guys with a whole bunch of blessed home communion kits to be delivered as soon as it is legal for Tracy to start those deliveries and for the rest of you to help with that. And so it is. I come to this second to last Sunday as your pastor, to this second to last worship service with you, to return to you as the Congregational Family of St. Peter's some of the tools of ministry the ministry we did together, which will continue to grow and thrive in your disciple hands and hearts. Because I know each and every one of you here has gifts to use in ministry. I have seen, tasted, touched, heard, and felt those gifts on many a blessed occasion. When we do a service of handing over the tools, usually we would return some items 
and I have some physical props to represent the various ministries and I'm going to use them to guide me through this process of returning these tools. I'm going to stand for this so there might require some screen adjustments, right? Okay, so, or at least make a bit of room. There we are. So the first item that I want to show you is this. How many of you recognize it? It's Marlon's handiwork. This pottery insert is a pot, the pottery insert that normally sits inside our stone font at church. It represents the role of baptizing. Now, it has fish and seashells imprinted on the inside of it. And there is no way I could lug that big font home from church. But I also love the mobility of this font that allows us to take that ministry of baptism out of our church if we need to do so. So if anyone needs to be baptized after I'm gone and the church still has to be closed, your new minister can actually take this with them if they want to use it, right? Not only have we witnessed so many baptisms and welcomed so many by baptism, singing Lori's morning star hymn or hearing the church choir singing, we have also remembered our baptism together so many times and at funerals. And many of you had the practice when coming up to the altar to receive communion of walking over to this font and dipping your fingers in and marking yourselves with a cross to remind yourselves to whom you belong. I return this item to you, this font representing our baptismal ministry together. And I ask that Laurie would receive it on behalf of you all. As Christ welcomes us into the family, so did Laurie serve as the first one from St. Peter's to welcome me once the call was extended to me. So I return this item to you, Laurie. Now, I've joked on a couple of occasions that the only instrument I really play well is the triangle. But if there's anyone who can teach someone who doesn't know music, music, it is Brad. And I came to you musically green. I remember when I got the call documents from St. Peter's and I looked St. Peter's up online and saw Brad on the website and recognized him from seminary and realized that if I was working with someone who was as gifted as this guy who I knew from seminary or whose gifts I knew from seminary, that my musical greenness would not disadvantage the community. The only instrument I ever played at church was a shaker and my voice. And this is about as far as my musical prowess goes. There was one time when Wanda was practicing bells downstairs and she was short people and I went downstairs and she managed to include me in a bell song, but we didn't want to try that in front of a live audience because we thought that would be a bit risky. So Brad received me, your musically green pastor, with grace and gentleness. He decoded the hymn book for me and he helped me to learn how hymnody, melody and language could support and enhance our whole lived experience of worship. I return the Ministry of Music to all of you, asking Brad to receive it on your behalf. Thank you, Brad. I return this precious soul-sustaining ministry to your care with gratitude for all that you have taught me about music. Within my first month at St. Peter's, we began a Bible study. It started in our parlor, and then we very quickly moved it over to the St. Peter's Place parlor because that space was more accessible for the people who were able to join. Shirley Mitchell was one of those people. She lived over at St. Peter's Place and she could use her little walker and get right into the games room where we had our study. And those Monday afternoon Bible studies 
allowed many of us to grapple with many scriptures from Revelations to the book of Ruth to uh, the story of um, the guy who gets swallowed by the whale whose name I can't remember right now. <laughs> we read through some parts of Isaiah. We went through a couple of the Gospels. We debated the value of parables and I'm yet to convince Barb Jones that parables are good things. But that Bible study was a sustaining thing for many of us. And that Bible study remains with you. I return this ministry of Bible study to all of you. And I ask you, Sherry, to receive this Bible on behalf of the congregation representing our adult Bible study when we delved into so much together. And I encourage you to continue this valuable ministry, however you can find ways to do so. Beyond Bible study, our learning ministries at St. Peter's were very, very vibrant. During the pandemic, we even had a Zoom study of the Gospel of Thomas. And before we got to this pandemic, we every year had that thriving vacation Bible school. Such a wonderful learning opportunity for children and youth alike. And we had many more other learning opportunities, including Lenten study opportunities. We use one of those Lenten studies to bring us to a vote on being an entirely inclusive congregation. And by that vote, your membership and your leadership will not be overshadowed by prejudice on the basis of sexual orientation, race, color, social standing, or any other factors that might cause prejudice in other settings. Last Lent, just before the pandemic, we had two Lenten soup and study sessions before the pandemic shut us down, and they had more than 35 people attending in person, which was phenomenal. And I saw that study and learning are marks of your discipleship. So this is the Lenten study booklet that was prepared for last year. And I return this learning ministry to your care, asking you, Haida Emmerich, to receive this item on behalf of the congregation and receive this ministry on behalf of the congregation. Now, our building is not a small building. I know that for many of you, it doesn't seem complicated, but when I first came physically to St. Peter's, I would frequently be meaning to go to the music room, for example, and end up on Church Street. Or I would be meaning to go to the movie room and I would end up in the art room because I would get confused quite a bit. It took me a while to get used to the building. And Bonnie Scott, who always has a system for everything to help keep us organized, she organized my keys for me. And so she said to me, Pastor, I made it really easy for you. The purple key is for Pastor's office. The blue key is for Bonnie's office. And the green key is for the grass. And she said that to me because this key has to be used with a number of doors, right? So it's like a common key. The black key is for the movie room because it's dark. So Bonnie, Scott, and Jan, Jan Newton together organized many administrative things to support myself, to support the church administrator's office and the facilities manager role. And the two of them together also did a lot of work to help me with the very gigantic portfolio of administration that the pastoral role has included. And I wouldn't have survived if it hadn't been for people like Jan and Bonnie. The good thing is that they also know intimately the workings of everything administrative that needs to be done at church. So I asked Jan, who is with us on screen, and Bonnie, who I think may be with us on phone, 
to receive these keys from me as I return this ministry of administration to the congregation. Now, when I joined you in 2015, you had these beautiful velvety bags that held home communion kits, and you had a practice of sending or extending the table at least once a month, I think we did that, and disciples came up after worship, after our communion was received, and we, we prayed over those bags that would go out so that those who were confined or couldn't be with us could receive communion. During the pandemic, we had to change things up because it wasn't safe to take objects into people's houses and sit with them. So we created a different kind of home communion kit. But what many of you don't know is that the home communion ministry ministered to me and brought communion to me when I was sick. So if you remember back in 2019, I had two weeks of sick leave when I got that mysterious plague of boils. And when it was safe to do so, Sandra and Barb Burden came to see me and they brought communion for me along with food, because you can't go wrong by feeding me, right? They brought communion for me and they brought food and they served me communion at my dining table, the same table that I'm worshiping at with you today. They were my ministers and all of you are ministers to each other. This is what our to-go home communion kits now look like. Inside each package is a dining table liturgy and typically two servings of the home communion disposable kits. So I return these to you and I leave you with some over a hundred of these kits that have been prepared now. And I return these to you and I asked Barb and Sandra and Ruth Croft, who I believe is dialed up with us today, to receive these on your behalf as I return this ministry of radical hospitality to your care and to your hands. I account for at least half of the gray hair in my head due to confirmation ministry. So during the pandemic, confirmation ministry has taken quite a hit, but we have had many groups of confirmation students and some students who really spent a long and scenic route in confirmation. There are many stories, stories of cats being chased at the Six Nations Reserve, stories of canoes being overturned, of waterfalls being climbed, there are two performance events of The Gambler being sung at Confirmation Camp. You know that Kenny Rogers song, The Gambler? And there is also the practice of deep theological questions coming, becoming a Confirmation ministry tradition. So the year after Aaron Berg was confirmed, I went to see Aaron before going to confirmation camp and I asked Aaron if he would write out for me a set of deep theological questions for pastor time, right? I share this with you not just to show off Aaron's theological capabilities, but I share this with you because I want you to understand that the gifts of these ministries are within the congregation. And so, each year we studied at least two or three times from our hymn book, the actual language of our confirmation liturgy. And I want to return this confirmation ministry liturgy and process to you. And I'm going to ask Aaron to receive this on your behalf through this hymn book. So I set that one down in my bowl here. Now today I don't think we have Avery on screen with us and a lot of the time we don't see Avery at church but she's one of those people who likes to work behind the scenes. Our youth ministry has been shepherded as best a university student could 
by Avery Robinson, who, without my even knowing it, quietly joined the Bridges supper team after we had had an evening um, where she came and helped with the Bridges supper. She's now a regular volunteer there, and um, she also led the youth ministry and has continued, I would say, in as far as one has been capable to do some leadership during this time. There were all kinds of things that the youth group did that I had nothing, no involvement in. Um, games nights, sleepovers, Easter breakfasts, and many other gatherings were organized without my involvement at all. To the extent that I had a role in youth and outreach ministry, I return these ministries to you. And Avery has agreed to be the recipient of these tools of ministry, the things with which meals are prepared when we go to the bridges or when we serve people at church, and a deck of cards representing the simple fellowship of game playing. And I add those items to this pile. Getting to be quite a big pile, guys. At baptism, as well as before death, anointing with oil happens. And I describe this to the children when I talk with them about baptism as God's invisible ink. I say it is like marking you with the cross of Christ forever. Laurie, what's the name of this thing? I can never remember. It's an oil stock. An oil stock. There you go. I call it the oil holy thingy. This little thingy here that holds anointing oil has been used at many sick beds, and it represents end of life care and anointing. It opens inside is a piece of cotton that is soaked with oil. I return this item to the congregation as a symbol of our bereavement ministry. I have to say the funeral ministry at St. Peter's has been one of the biggest ministries of hospitality that we have been able to offer people. And your funeral ministry has always been a sound Christian comfort to bereaved families. Even in the pandemic, you have found ways to be involved. And I return this to you and Donna has agreed to receive this on behalf of the congregation. The last item that I'm going to add to this pile, I have them in every room of my house. A few weeks after I started at St. Peter's, they appeared in every pew. Kleenex. I had an appointment book that became filled each week with appointments for pastoral counseling and care, which often was just accompaniment through a difficult time. And a lot of the time, what I did was I found ways to help you to accompany each other. I remember after one particularly teary session, one member brought me a few boxes of Kleenex, recognizing the value of tears being shed. So I return to you unused Kleenex, representing your ministry of care and counsel and accompaniment with each other, and with the encouragement to continue strong in supporting and encouraging each other. I was not able to confirm who's going to receive this in the course of the week, but I'll get to that, and it will be received by someone next Sunday. Okay, so this large collection of things, we will visit with them again briefly next week. This ministry that we have done together, it is a journey. And soon we come to that part on that journey where our pathways will part. May we continue to praise Jesus as we journey on our different ways. May we live as servants of Jesus as we journey on in our different ways. And may we sing to the dawn of God's kingdom at the end of our journey. Amen. <laughs>